Hi guys, I'm Emily, the Minimalish Mama, and today I'm here in my office because I have some papers that I need to file and I really need to go through our filing system. So I thought I would take you along with me and share a few tips for eliminating paper clutter. And really, the key to this is having a system, knowing where your papers belong, giving them a designated home so they don't pile up and so that you can find things when you need them. So let's get into that. So to stop piles before they even start, I follow the three one 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 rules. One, touch. The first time you touch a paper is the last time you'll touch it. You're gonna take it straight to its home the first time you touch it. Secondly, there's only one home. So there's only two types of papers you should keep and each of those has one home. Those that need to be filed and those that you need to take action on. And then one minute. If it takes one minute or less, just do it now. Pay the bill, recycle that junk mail, or file that file. There are a couple recipes in here that I want to try. So when I'm not filming this, I'll be able to actually just take pictures of the ones that I want, and then I can recycle this whole magazine. After I've read it, it, I really don't need to keep it around because the information in it is fairly timely. So once I've digested the good stuff, been inspired, I can snap pictures of anything that I want to remember and then I can recycle it. This is a little flyer from our local library with their events. All of these events are online on their website, so I don't need to keep this. I can go look online and then add any events that I'm interested in to my digital calendar right away. This is a referral for the root canal that I have coming up. Really fun stuff. Um, so I do need to hang on to this just until I have that appointment because they needed that information. Here I have a folder of information from school. I already took care of that. Okay, I need to get Edison's latest physical and send that to the school. So I'm gonna actually put that on my to-do list for today and then I can get rid of this. This is a copy of our dog's latest checkup, so I need to file that. He has a file folder right here. This was my first ever article that I wrote for a magazine, and I have the acceptance letter here, and then the actual article here. This was a sewing project that I made. I actually ended up getting rid of this dress because I never wore it but I wanted to keep the magazine article, even though I recycled the rest of the magazine. But this is kind of sentimental, so I could try to digitalize this by scanning it and saving it, but I think actually what I'm gonna do with it is put it with my sentimental stuff in my sentimental box upstairs. Definitely doesn't need to go in my action items. These are business receipts from last year that I also have digital copies of. And I already did my taxes for last year, so I can get rid of those now. And then lastly in here is this wedding invitation that I made for my sister's wedding in 2013. <laughs> so I need to file this with my graphic design portfolio stuff from back when I did graphic design. And that folder is down here. So I have two things to put away. I'm gonna put those on my computer and then that leaves only my work canal paperwork to hang on to. These are all of our papers. <laughs> we used to have two boxes like this full, but I've been able to sort them and cut it down to just this one box of all of our important papers that need to be filed. Really, there isn't a lot of stuff that you need to file, 
that can't be found online. Health stuff, I have that. I have a folder for each of us in the family and any prescription, like glasses prescriptions or um, dental records, that kind of thing. Make sure if you're saving your health information, you have one folder for health insurance. That statement of benefits that you get with you sign up for health insurance, it's like this huge packet. Almost all of that can be found online because most health insurance providers have an online login system where you can go on and see what all your benefits are. So you don't need to keep that. And make sure if you're putting anything in your file folders that you're taking out what's there and replacing it. So you don't get like packets of health insurance information from like five years ago that you're hanging on to for no reason. My folders are organized by category and then they're alphabetized. And there's a loose paper here. Okay, so we have mortgage and credit score info, but that should be under M, so I'm not sure why it's out of order. Oh, I've almost forgot. I have a whole new package of file folders because so many of our old folders, we've I've used like multiple different systems. For the brief time period, I did some extreme couponing. I have week H here, which was part of that whole system. And so like it's crossed out and a new thing is written next to it. Some of these have like three or four things written and crossed out. It's a little confusing. So we're gonna be replacing our file folders today. If you feel a sense of dread about filing any papers and you tend to pile them up, it could be that your categories are just too complicated. You have it broken down into too many micro categories or they're just confusing and you don't know where to put it. If you have a category system that is simple and makes sense to you, it won't be such a chore to have to file something and you'll be able to find it right away. This is quite terrifying. This whole stack is taxes, paperwork, receipts, etc. And it's all mixed in. This one says, I made a label that says tax deductible donations 2011 but i'm seeing someone <laughs> put a bunch of stuff in there that is not that there's tax returns there's receipts from 2015 yeah so i think what these are labeled is not what is inside and i'm gonna need to go through it all good news is look at how much room is in here now and look at how this pile has grown. <laughs> oh, here. These are all of our tax returns dating back to 2012. That's looking pretty good. This is stuff I need to ask Brian about. And then these are some things of Brian's, sentimental stuff from his races and business ideas that I'm gonna have him keep with his folders in here. Here is the massive pile of like tax stuff that I need to go through. Some cards that I need to put with Bennett's sentimental stuff because they're from when he was born. Real quick, what was in our other file box? So we gotta go through this too. This is my dirty secret. <laughs> this is my file drawer and basically it's just stuff to the gills full of like sentimental papers and books like old devotionals and artwork like my first ever sketchbook is right here and just all kinds of crazy stuff so i'm thinking it would be really nice to clean this out and especially if i can clean this out and then i can fit those files into it it's really annoying is that the files in that box the home mortgage loans, the papers are extra long and so they won't fit this way in the box. They have to go a long way. But this type of- oh my, it's so full and heavy. This drawer would accommodate that because it would be able to stick out longer past the space here. So I would really like to do that, but I'm going to have to go through all of this stuff and put it somewhere else. As you're going through papers, when you do find sentimental things or photographs, I recommend you just set that aside to deal with 
when you have the bandwidth to do it and usually emotional or sentimental decluttering should come at the end of your whole decluttering journey or definitely at a time when you are feeling fresh and able to tackle it. I did go through this binder really quickly. It's basically my inspiration pre Pinterest from like 10 years ago. Stuff about home, style, but I was so surprised as I was going through it to find that about 90% of the home articles I had saved from 10 years ago were about organizing long before I ever dreamed that organizing could be my job. So here is our after. <music> All that was left for me to do was to go through that big stack of tax-related documents or tax documentation. Ideally, for sorting papers like these, you could use sticky notes to designate what each pile was in the different years. I happened to run out of some sticky notes, so mine is not quite that neat, but I did create individual file folders for each year. Okay, so here I have folders for all of our tax documents starting in 2005, so three years before we got married. We got married in, no, we didn't get married in 2008, 2010. Five years before we got married. I have tax stuff for Brian from it. So I have 2005 to 2017 in one folder because it's fairly small. We have a massive folder for 2009. I have no idea what happened to 2008. I don't have a folder here for 2019. I'm assuming, I'm hoping, Brian has a folder for that in his drawer. I'm really scared to look in there and see. But I have a folder created for 2019 and 2020. Hoping that that's going to be easy to find in Brian's drawer. I just looked through Brian's folders, at least the labels, and I don't see any 2018 or 19 or 20. So that's good. Oh my gosh. Do you guys see this? On Brian's computer, it has digitalized all of those receipts and documents starting in 27, uh, 2007, sorry, all the way through last year. All those receipts I just spent hours organizing, they're all saved digitally. <laughs> Such a life. So now that I know that we have a digital copy of all of these receipts that I just spent so long sorting, I'm going to recycle all of this and I am going to, instead of keeping a folder for each year, I'm just going to have one folder and this is just going to be called taxes. And then after we file our taxes for that year and we have the digital copies, I'm going to clean it out, recycle everything, and it'll be ready for the next year's taxes. <sighs> it's gonna be much easier. So I've also been reading up on the IRS website about what stuff you need to keep and for how long. The statute of limitations is three years. That's how far back they'll go for an audit after you file your taxes, three years, unless a few other conditions are met. And those situations are filing a claim for a loss from worthless securities or bad debt reduction bad debt deduction. Well, the general rule is three years is the longest that you need to keep all of your, your tax return stuff unless you have some special conditions going on with your taxes. Okay, so what I'm also finding online is that you can keep your official tax return forever. So like that blue folder that I showed you. The supporting tax documentation keep for three to seven years. Seven years is the maximum if you have 
skipped a year of filing taxes or done some fraudulent taxes or something like that. So basically three years. So another thing we can talk about is like mortgage paperwork. Cause as you saw, I have a lot of mortgage paperwork. You should keep all the papers and contracts related to buying or selling a home for as long as you have that home and the loan for that home. So everything related to buying this house, our mortgage info, the sale contract, all of that I'm keeping. The house that we had in Arizona, I still have some of that mortgage paperwork and loan paperwork, but all of that has been paid off and we are past the statute of limitations on that. So I can get rid of all of that. Bank statements, you should check your bank statements and your balance online and don't save the bank statements that you get in the mail. Make sure you set up online banking and that is gonna cut so much paper out of your life. If for some reason you can't do online banking, I mean, if it's security you're worried about, it's 2020, banks put billions of dollars behind having secure systems, so it's a lot more secure than a bunch of papers in your house. So definitely do online banking. Otherwise, if you have old bank statements that you're not sure what to do with, you should only keep those for one year. So if you have bank statements that are older than a year, you can go ahead and get rid of those. Anything related to a marriage certificate, birth certificate, death certificate, social security cards, keep forever. And you could keep those in a file, but I would actually suggest you keep those in a lockbox to make sure that they're very secure. For one year, you can store pay stubs. For one month, any bills, deposits, withdrawals, any paperwork related to that. And whenever possible, do scan and save your documents digitally. Have a backup system. So like I have everything backed up to an external hard drive and to Apple iCloud. So I have a backup and a backup for my backup. That is definitely the safest way to keep your documents. The only thing left for me to do is go through those sentimental papers. So let me know in a comment down below if you would like to see a video on that. I'll need to do it soon since they don't fit in the box. Okay, Whew, that was quite a job over the course of the last couple afternoons. I hope you enjoyed watching my process and learned a few things along the way about what papers to keep, what to get rid of, what to digitalize, all of that. I have a giant bag of shredding to get to, so I'm gonna end this video here. <laughs> and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment letting me know what kind of organizing video you would like to see next. Thanks so much, bye.